Hey, what's up? I'm Allie, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the 16 things I wrote in August. 16. 16. Who am I? Because I think my average book amount of books I've been reading each month is like three to five, maybe. One is a manhwa that I pretty much read the whole series of, so that's where a lot of those books actually come from. As always, there will be timestamps listed down below, so if there's any particular title that you're looking for my thoughts and feelings about, you can go ahead and find it. First, I read The King of Eltham Learn to How the King of Eltham Learn to Hate Stories or something. Look, the world's longest title. Well, unnecessary. But here we are. This is a part of the Cruel Prince series. It's part of that world in a way. And it's basically short stories about the prince's life. And we love it. We love Cardin. I'm obsessed. When I read that series, I feel like back in that series was just so different from anything that I've read before that it really sticks out in my mind. And so it has just a really great little bit nostalgia, just happy feelings wrapped up in it. And I was just interested to read something that I felt comfortable with, something that would make me happy again, something that might get me out of a reading slump. So I picked up the short story collection. I actually flew through the stories. It was so nice being back into a world that I love with characters that I love. And I just love the little the banteringness between him and Jude, but also just getting to learn more about our beautiful Prince Carter. I always think that the writing in these books is just so beautiful and inspiring, and it reads like an old fairy tale to me, which I love. I think that Ollie Black has done a really good job at kind of recreating that type of sentence structure and depiction and I love it. I eat it up so I really enjoy this. I gave it four out of five stars. It's just short stories. It doesn't really add anything to the world. It was just more of like this is going to make me happy right now moment and that worked. It worked for that and that's great. Then I decided I'm making my graphic novel comeback. So I've been trying to read more graphic novels, which is how I ended up getting into a manhwa. And um, I read The Lunch Lady. Now this is a middle grade graphic novel. I thought it might be cute to read and maybe recommend for the spooky season because this is about a witch who becomes a lunch lady. And it's basically because can't find work anywhere else. And she's like, well, you know, maybe I can do nasty things to the kids' food. And she ends up loving it. However, she gets a little paranoid that one of the students might be onto her and kind of makes makes a mistake and bad things happen. Um, this is a really cute story. It's really quick. The artwork is kind of like weird and creepy and gross. So it was really fit on theme. I gave it a three out of five stars. I don't, I do know that this is a series. I don't think I'll be continuing on with the series just because I thought this was enough and I thought that this delivered on what I needed it to. And that was it. All right, then we have Kai Kai, and this is a Indian mythology retelling. It is about the stepmother of Ram whenever he goes on, he, when he is banished by her. And he goes on like this, I think it's 14 year quest and rages this war to get his wife back and comes back to his kingdom and is very successful. Um, but this is following the life of the stepmother who banished him and how um, she has been kind of looked at as a bad figure in this epic. First of all, I'm a sucker for a mythology retelling. Um, I will say I do tend to go into mythology a little more ignorant because I feel like I tend to enjoy the material more as the story as it is and then I end up enjoying the source material more because I've read something that is a little more up my alley, a little more a little more my speed. Uh, I love a feminist retelling. So I went into Circe and Song of Achilles both pretty much not knowing anything about the original myths that they come from. So I kind of did the same thing here and I really enjoyed it. Um, this is obviously slower paced. It reads like an epic. We see her from her birth all the way as she gets older. It is about how she wants to be a powerful woman who has, can make decisions and is, that's really important to her about making the right decisions that are right for her people. 
and I really love seeing that. I love I love when you get like the untold story behind something. Love to see what was the, the villain actually doing a good deed type thing. Um, I love this. It, I tend to go into mythology retellings knowing that they are going to take my whole brain. They're going to take a while and this did take me a while but I enjoyed every second of it despite it being slower. Um, it was definitely a book that I had to be in the mood for and I just loved it. I thought that the author did such a good job of making it feel like I was reading from an original epic and the characters were so well done. When I finally take the time to read them, I do tend to love mythology retellings and I would say if you are a fan of Circe, you'll absolutely be a fan of this one. I gave it a 4.5 stars. I thought it was just so well done. I couldn't stop thinking about it after I finished it. But shit, the only thing that kept it from being a full five stars is that it is throughout a slower pace and I felt that the end, the pacing didn't quite fit with the rest of the book. The, it just was a little bit more rushed than everything else and it felt a little off. I felt like I was just rushing into something. I know that that's technically where a lot of the um, ROM mythology really takes off. So we were kind of led up to that point and then free to think what we will after that, but um, it just felt a little, a little different from the rest of the pacing. Good shit. Oh my god, it's just so good. It was just so good. It was just so good. I also read Coven, and this is a graphic novel. I do believe that it comes out in September. This is about a girl who's a witch. She knows she's a witch, but she kind of has to hide the fact that she's a witch. Something has happened in her family's original coven, and they've been kind of hiding away from the coven, and they find out that they have to to go back. So she has to move all the way across the country. She's really upset about it. She has to leave her girlfriend and her friends behind and she's just really doesn't want to be a witch. Like she doesn't care. She doesn't want to be part of this coven. Like she's got other things to worry about. They have to move back because there's been a murder and there's some weird stuff going on. So as she is trying to navigate fitting into this new town and trying to deny who she is, um, she is also starting to learn more about what it means to be a witch and be in a coven. And as that progresses, that it's changing her a bit, that her values are changing and she has to take things more seriously than she had before. And I thought this was really great. I love the pacing of this. You get a little bit of the background. You get to see her progression. You see her making new friends and family and it is pretty dark at times. We're talking about demons, we're talking about sacrifice, we're talking about blood and gore. So it does have a little bit of that. I wouldn't say that it's scary though. And I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the story. I'm interested to see if it will continue. A little predictable, I kind of knew where we were going with it, but I didn't think that it took away from the enjoyment of it. I still thought that it was fun. I wasn't in it for like a shock value. I was definitely just in it to see how our character was going to grow. I give it a 3.5. If you ask me what I didn't like about it in the moment, I couldn't tell you. All right, then we get into the horror. The horror, the horror, the horror. That's all I've been thinking about lately. So the first horror that I read was Dark Harvest. I've been into horror novellas specifically. And this one, I don't know what I was expecting, but this wasn't it. This is about this town tradition where on like Halloween night, there is this pumpkin man that is out and about in the town and the the boys in the town have to go and try to kill him. Sometimes they get killed themselves by the pumpkin, the pumpkin man. And it's a bit weird because it seems to be only a tradition in this town. Um, there's some weird circumstances around it. Like where does this pumpkin man come from? What is he made of? Um, why does this happen? Why are only the boys expected to do it? Like there's a lot of mystery surrounding this. It kind of jumps right into it though. You get the action, you get the small town drama, you get to know about all the deep dark secrets that this town is harvesting. Harvesting? That's not the word that I wanted. Harboring, harboring. All the deep dark secrets that this, this town is harboring. Um, and we follow a pretty, a, a pretty conflicted character who is like, no, I don't wanna do it. 
there's some weird things, but then also wants to prove himself and he's kind of sick of being stuck in the same place. And apparently if you can kill the pumpkin man, like you're going to be set for life. You can get out of town, do whatever you want. Like you're going to be a successful person. So that is kind of how he goes into it thinking. And then of course more is revealed. It was action packed. It was gory at times. I loved the setting. I thought the setting was done so well. It's just kind of ooky and spooky, but you can picture some of the things that are happening just so well. And I really enjoyed it. Give it a 4.5 stars and it is perfect for the Halloween. Like read it on Halloween and you'll just get the, the chills of thinking of someone out there lurking and killing. I also read What Moves the Dead and this was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I went into this knowing pretty much nothing because I do think that is the best way to read a T. Kingfisher book. T. Kingfisher just does such a fantastic job of making things just feel gross and creepy. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way possible. This is about a, a person who has been called because their friend is dying. Something's happening. Oh, their long-term friend is dying. So they kind they go to see what is happening. And like, not only is their friend dying, but like weird things are happening with said friend as she is dying. And also just everyone in the house is kind of, things aren't right. There's some weird things happening. The land doesn't feel right. Like this, everything surrounding the area just is weird. So our character goes and encounters this and like is like, what the fuck is going on? Shorter book, I do think that the pacing at times, it was enough of the law between the suspense that really keeps you gripped. And there's just such weird, creepy things happening that you don't want to look away at any given time. Like, I couldn't put this down because I needed to know what weird shit was going to happen next. And if you like fungus horror, I get you. I get you. I love this. I flew through it. I thought, again, the atmosphere is done so well. I love the characters. Um, there's some really quirky characters in this that I was, was really appreciative of. Um, was it convenient at times? Maybe. Maybe. But just the imagery overall was enough to give me nightmares. I gave this a 4.5. I was not disappointed. I just really enjoyed it and thought it was a fantastic quick horror read if that is, do, uh, do it. I've been a little iffy on Kingfisher's writing in the past because sometimes it's very much a hit or miss with the, <laughs> the creepy things that are happening, but this one, this one was good. More horror novellas. Who's surprised? Okay, next we have Below, and this has Mothman, which this also has Mothman, and these are from Chris, so thank you, Chris, for the Mothman gifts because something to know about me. I fucking love Mothman. I would marry Mothman. Mothman and his shiny ass are welcome here anytime. I probably should not have said that. This obviously plays on the legend of Mothman, and this is about a woman. She's gone through this divorce. Um, things are just not a good time. She's headed to a party, and she ends up kind of having a bit of a scare. She's not very good at driving at night, and she ends up meeting this, this tractor trailer, driver who offers to help her um kind of navigate through the night it's also stormy out so they decide that they're gonna they're gonna do the storm because she would rather get through it than be stuck where she's at along the way something happens there's some weird things that happen and something appears in the road causing the tractor trailer to upturn and go off a bridge she, being the good person that she is, having felt connected to this person, decides to go and um, make sure he's okay, try to save him. But of course, like, it's quite treacherous to get down there. And as she is headed down there, she realizes she is not alone. And something, something is hunting her. This is suspense from start to end. Oh my god. And I was fast. This has like every fear of mine ever combined into a book. So it was really ooky spooky for me. It's dark. It's cold. There's a cave. There's water. There's 
creatures. There are multiple creatures. It's not... I will say, the cover feels a bit misleading because Mothman plays a quite a small role overall in this, um, in the actual writing of the book. In the story, it's a bit bigger, but in the actual writing. So, like, Mothman is not the highlight of this. Actually, I would say that this is... You spend a lot more time in the character's brain, and it's about just anxieties in life and getting through, um, like, abusive relationships and also accepting yourself. And being a woman in the world is terrifying. If you're into if women in power, yes. Like, women coming into their power and really accepting who they are and learning about their power and kind of letting go of patriarchal shackles, so to say. These were fancy words for me. More layers to it than one would expect. While also delivering on just the fact that it is scary. It's scary stuff. Um, if you were a fan of, I think it's The Descent, I think you're going to like this. I gave this a four out of five stars. Again, my one big thing is that it does feel I would have liked some more Mothman, just singing, just singing, because I fucking love Mothman. I read Just Like Home, again, another one of my anticipated releases of the year, and this is about a woman who has left home. She has to come back because her mother is sick. However, um, her home is not a good home. It's where she grew up and where her serial killer father killed people in the basement is since in jail and her mom has kind of let people come in and use the house for weird, re like come in and do like seances and like try to speak to the ghost of these poor murdered people. And like, there's, a, there's different things that are happening. And she's, you can tell her and her mother are not in a good spot. And there is abuse involved, but not necessarily where you think it will come from. You obviously know that the father was a serial killer. I will say that it takes a while to get to the moment when that is fully revealed, like the reasonings and things like that, like basically halfway through the novel, despite the fact that it's in the synopsis. So we really do spend a long time just getting to know our character, getting to learn about her insecurities as a child, her weird childhood, and more about her relationship with her mother more so than her father. Like she loved her father. And it's how she has to battle with the fact that she loved basically a bad person and how she's been struggling with that. Wasn't a, this wasn't a hit for me, unfortunately, as much as I really wanted to love it. I was trying so hard to love it. Uh, one, the audiobook, I honestly wouldn't suggest. It sounds like the person narrating it, as, as great as they were, it often sounded like they were whispering the whole thing, and I had a really hard time concentrating and actually hearing what was being said. So that was an interesting choice. I get why I think it was done that way, but I had a hard time. So just a side note that doesn't really go into my rating. I think the super slow pacing and the reveals that weren't all that revealing, like we kind of already know, we kind of expect, weren't that great. And the big reveal at the end is is shocking, but also feels like it comes a bit out of nowhere. And that doesn't tend to be particularly my favorite. It also has like some paranormal type aspects. And I tend to like to know about those things going into it. Not, I don't like to be surprised by those things because they tend to feel convenient. They tend to feel like bad writing when I feel like they come out of nowhere. So I do tend to like those things to be a little bit more upfront. So I didn't particularly enjoy that. I did like um, a bit of the turn of events that took place at the end, which really kind of saved it for me. But overall, like I just kept waiting for, waiting for the shoe to drop, so to say, and waiting for that big, oh my God moment. But it just didn't, didn't happen, I guess. And even the parts that I felt like were supposed to be kind of shocking, I was just kind of like, well, at this point, like we've, like, I, it's kind of expected. I felt the ending came a little out of nowhere. It was still, I think, an enjoyable ending. And it was one that I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, this is an interesting concept. I wish that it had led more up to it, but it was an interesting concept. So I give this a 3.5. And now I'm kind of second guessing that after I just like shit it all over this book. But 
I do see why a lot of people would really enjoy it. I just think that I was caught a little off guard by some of the things that were happening and it, and it kind of ruined it a bit for me. And then the very last thing that I'm going to talk about is an eight, eight volume series. I read Killing Stalking. I knew going into this that this is, first of all, trigger warnings, a whole, a whole shebang of trigger warnings for this. This is not for the light of heart. It's not for anyone um, who's just into casual horror either. I would say that this is more extreme in gore and violence and assault on all levels. This is not something I would ever, I think, recommend just putting it out into the world. This is definitely something that I feel like you have to know going into it what it is about to enjoy it. And enjoy is a word that I'm going to use loosely. More like to be fascinated, to be captivated, to understand. Anyway, um, so Killing Stalking is about this, it's about a stalker. He is a perverted stalker who ends up sneaking into the home of his latest conquest, so to say, and ends up finding out that his, the, the person that he is stalking is actually a killer. And so he ends up being captured by his crush and becomes prisoner to to him. This is listed as a boy love, and I would not say that. The authors even said, do not romanticize this at all, but they end up creating this really weird relationship between the two of them, and it's pretty fucked up. There is a lot of sexually intense scenes, a lot of gore, um, and it's a lot of psychological things to unpack, and I think I was most blown away with the fact that this even though it had a lot of graphic scenes that are just kind of a lot of like moaning and groaning and grunting and like weird wet noises, um, I do think that it did a really good job of making me be invested in these characters and really wanting to learn what, like what led to this moment and how did we get here because there's just enough little hints about their past to make you wonder more and there are times when you feel bad for them. They're bad people. Like, they are both bad people. But there are times when you feel so bad for them. And you really sympathize. And then you're like, wait a minute. No, we're not doing that. I thought that this did a really good job of just continuing that story and really revealing those things. I thought the pacing was really great. My only real complaints about the series overall is that, like, there is kind of a side story that's introduced. It's supposed to be part of the main plot. It feels like a side story because we focus on it at the beginning. We get a little lost in the middle of like what the meaning of the story is. And there was one volume, I think it was volume five, that I did rate lower than the others because it just felt like it got a little bit lost in what we were doing. And just felt like it was trying to be kind of cute. And even though the author had said, like, don't romanticize it, it very much felt like the author was trying to push a romanticized narrative in that volume. And I was just kind of like, this is kind of weird. Like, this is interesting. I just feel like things got lost. And then it comes back. Then this side plot ends up coming back because it's important to the end of the story. So it just felt a little muddled in the middle. God, I'm like, can't stop thinking about it. Um, I was like, oh my god, everyone's going to judge my Goodreads updates. It's fine. Um, yes, uh, in no way am I saying that these are good characters, and I just think that this is a compelling story. It has a lot of depth that you can go into. You could really look into analyze a lot of these characters and what is going on. Um, there are some concerns that I have, obviously, not just with the fact that this is like a serial killer, you know, creepy pervert, things like that, but with the the overall storytelling as well, um, just the way that it was depicting some mental health issues weren't good, and if you go into it knowing that, um, just be aware that it it it's not a good depiction of a lot of mental health issues. So I gave pretty much all of them a four stars, except for volume five, I gave a three star. And then the very last volume I loved, 
And I gave a 4.5 because I thought it was a spectacular ending to the series. And I really enjoyed that. So I would openly recommend to everyone, but something that if you are into a little bit more extreme content, that might be up your alley. And yes, I did binge all eight volumes in like a week. Shit was just, I couldn't stop. Couldn't stop. That's it for my wrap up. I feel like I've been talking for 10 years. It's fine. I hope that you all have liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to see future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.